Hey everybody, Jabman025 here. Today I'm taking a look at my 85th Master Grade, the Heavy Arms version EW. I always like the Heavy Arms, so I decided to pick this kit up, so let's have a look and see what we got. Now to start off, you get this very bright orange part of the kit, which is a little too bright, but it's not bad. I decided to leave it alone. I thought about painting it in a different orange, but decided to leave it alone. See Troll in there. Nice little opening for the hatch. Now, one of the first things you'll notice when getting this kit is you got some painting to do on this kit. If you do not like to do painting on your kits, this ain't the kit for you because you got a fair bit of painting to do. See the gun barrels for the chest, they have to be painted. You don't have to necessarily use silver, but you got to use something to break up the monotony of the solid gray across. See, a piece goes over the top of it. I have noticed on this kit, while you do have a lot of painting to do, they do make it very, very easy for you in the ways you have to paint. You'll see other examples here shortly. The full chest. I am happy to report the blue sections on the chest. You don't got to paint that. That's done for you. There's a little piece in there, a blue piece of plastic. You snap in there. Works just fine. Opens up the chest. You can see the gun barrels underneath. Nice, solid connections. They're not loose. They're not swinging around. So they're easy to open, easy to close, but they're not so loose that they're flopping all over the place. Head on this kit. Fairly simple. A little bit of lining to do. There isn't very much lining on this kit. A little bit, but for the most part, not a whole lot. And it definitely looks like a heavy arms head. Again, another example. Here you see the, miss the missiles for the shoulder. You see, you're going to put the individual missiles in, in packs of three or two or what have you. And, of course, you got to paint those as well because they're the exact same color. You've got to break it up. What you paint, it's up to you. Silvers, reds. I chose a lighter gray to break up the monotony. But, you see, you got to paint each individual missile. And there are a lot of missiles on this kit, so you got some painting to do. You see, I took a darker gray and lined in those sections on the shoulder. That's optional. In all the pictures, they don't show that, but I kind of like the look, so I went ahead and did it. Again, this is something I just did to customize it a little, just because I like the look. But you don't have to do that there. The hands on this kit, same as all the other EW hands. Just swap out the, the four fingers as you see fit. Skirt armor, guess what? More missiles on the side skirt and on the front skirt. Little latches open up. And yes, I painted those too. I used the same dark gray on the front and back skirt armor to keep the theme going. It meshes well with the yellow. Again, a little bit of lining, but very little lining on this kit. But you do have a little bit to do here and there. Here you see the leg. I painted this section here silver because if you put a piece of armor on it, you can see a little silver underneath. Again, you don't have to do this. This is just something I thought would look neat. So I slapped it on there. And I used that same dark gray for those lines there on the inner uh, thigh of the kit. Here you see it put together. Legs are pretty much the same legs you see on every EW kit. Nice, but nothing particularly fancy about them. But they do a good job. You see, for the most part, he's all ready to roll. But guess what? More missiles. Missile pods for the legs. And yes, you got to paint those as well. You see the latches here. And you have a little extra painting to do. You see the latch is made out of a white. Well, it's not supposed to be white. And there it is supposed to be gray. So a dark gray in there to try and match that inner frame. So you got to paint the, that and then put that over the top of the missiles as so. And that looks really good. But again, there's a good deal of painting in there. Now, like I said, doesn't matter what color you use to do the missiles, but you do have to paint them so they can break up the monotony or they just blend into the background. Backpack, fairly simple. These little bars on each side. Move up, move down. Very sim reminiscent of Heavy Arms EW Custom, which we're, I'm sure we're going to see here shortly. See the nice big bend out of the knees. Elbows are good, and the shoulders are kind of getting in the way of it the poses, but it's not bad. With those big old bulky shoulders, you kind of expect them to get in the way a little bit. And here you see the heavy arms all decaled up. Now this is a version, co I mean, pardon me, version EW, so there are a lot of decals to do. I will admit some of the dry transfers are a big pain in the butt. If I had things to do over again, I probably would have done the decals as I was building the kit. But you live, you learn. If I ever build another heavy arms, which I probably will end up doing, I'll do the decals as I build it. 
Now here you see all the missile pods open, everything facing forward. You can see I did have to give a flat coat to everything because it kind of gave a little bit of gloss all the painting I did, but it looks pretty good when everything's open and ready to fire. And that looks pretty good. Now for the accessories. First off, you get this beam saber that's connected to the arm. To put it on there, you have to pretty much disassemble most of the arm. You can see parts all over the place. This is not an easy transition. Go back and forth, ain't easy. This recreates an episode from Gundam Wing. Now I'd love to show you the beam saber blade that came with this kit. I'd love to, but it doesn't exist. There is no beam saber blade. They recommend in the manual that you get the green blade from the Master Grade Wing Gundam, not EW, and use it since it only used one blade anyway. Still, for people who don't have that kit, that's got to be a little aggravating, but it really have killed Bandai to throw in that little green plate of the two beam sabers. Apparently they're pinching pennies. But truthfully, you're not going to be using that beam saber a whole lot anyway. Next up, shield. Nice inner frame in there, slapped on a big chunk of red. Do have some lining to do here. Nothing fancy, looks nice. And the army knife. Uh, flips around to the front. That is originally colored black. I repainted it silver because I thought it would look cool. It's something you don't have to do. It's up to you. It's personal choice. Flip that around. Have it forward. It looks pretty good. And you can see rock solid connection. No problem. Shake it. Rattle it. Roll it. Nothing's falling off. Nothing's opening. We're good. Now for the machine gun itself. First we got this ammo uh, belt. Nice little plastic piece running through the center, and you got each individual clip which you run on down. My first thought, I thought, okay, I have to repaint this whole thing. But looking at it, it was like, you know, it's not so bad. Until I got it off the part tree, and you can see bad nubs all around. Every single one, lots of bad nubs. That's a lot of sanding, a lot of cleaning to do. Or you could just repaint it, which I did. And the machine gun itself, I re did a lot of repainting here. I repainted the barrels themselves, aluminum. Added some black in here, a little detail work. Again, I painted that whole thing a bit of a dark gray and repainted the ammo canister gray as well so it would match. And I think it looks kind of nice differentiating from the gun itself. Again, this is all optional whether you want to do this or not. I kind of think it kind of needs it to break things up a little. Same deal with all the other EWs. Got that little connection there, a little tooth that hooks into the gun. Not the easiest thing to hook on to, because it's tricky to get those fingers in there and connect it onto the hand, but once you got it, you're good. No problems holding this guy. Hold it at full extension, no problems. Not an issue at all. I was kind of surprised. I thought, eh, this is pretty heavy. I wonder if it's going to be able to hold it. Not a problem. You can even slap a shield on there, too. Still no problem. Hold it any way you want. Not an issue. Now, when we decal this up, I thought the decals on the heavy arms itself looked good, but the decals on the weapons really, really look nice. They really accent some pieces, especially on the dark gun. That Those white decals look really nice. And that really adds a little detail to the weapons. And it looks pretty good. Now, the other thing you can do is you can swap on the machine gun onto the backpack as well. The ammo canister already goes there, but you can flap on the machine gun as well and have it as a backpack. It's a tad back heavy now, but really not that bad. It's not going to fall over. And so far, so good. We're looking pretty good. But let's face it, one of the best things about this particular kit is flipping around every missile, having this sucker wide open, everything pointing at you. This looks pretty badass the old fashion of you do not want to be at the front of this Gundam when it fires everything. Pretty cool look. Looks really, really nice. But it took a lot of work to get there. And here you see the four EWs that I currently have. Now, I'm sure you're asking yourself, uh, why doesn't he have the Shenlong? Well, when the Shenlong came out, I was a little tight on funds, couldn't really afford it at the time, so I had to pass on it. But I now have a Shenlong in my possession. I'm going to be building it so I can finish the band, and stay tuned for that review. It will be coming up soon. Final thoughts on this kit. I'm giving this kit a big thumbs up. This has a really good look to it, really good accessories, solid posability. Overall, a really good kit. In fact, of the, all the EW kits I've built so far, Death Scythe, uh, Wing, Verka, and Sandrock, I think this is the, the best of the four. 
Granted, I still got Shenlong to go. Now, for those of you who do not like to do painting, you might consider passing on this. To really make this kit stand out, you got some painting to do, at least by Master Grade standards. So keep that in mind. But overall, this is a real big thumbs up for me. Good kit. And by virtue of being the first kit of 2012, this is your leader for Master Grade Kit of the Year. Well, gang, thanks for watching. I hope you enjoyed this review. Hope you found it informative. If you've got any questions, ask them. I will answer them as best I can. Please leave a comment. You guys know I love reading them. And please stay tuned for more. I always got more reviews coming. Thanks again, guys, and I will see you next time. Oh, and uh, one more thing. Jazz hands!